All right, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Buck Now Fellowship. Uh, thank God for all of you uh, here. Uh, thank God for all of those who are watching by way of internet. Uh, we truly thank God for all of you. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, dive right in tonight. Uh, got a lot to cover uh, as it pertains to our verse by verse study through the book of Corinthians. Uh, just one quick announcement I'll be uh, uh, preaching at the Florida Regional Grace Conference uh, this January. Um, this information uh, it's on the website. If you go to buttonoutfellowship.com, the information is on the website. Uh, I have not heard anything about streaming. Uh, as far as the conference is concerned, I have not heard whether or not they will be streaming it. I have not actually reached out to anybody yet uh, about it. So, uh, but I will try to do that uh, sometime uh, before Sunday, day. before yeah. Sunday, so I can get an answer on that. Because uh, I had a lot of people to ask me, will it? Will they be streaming it for those people who won't be able to make yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And I know they did last year, but we didn't know it until after the fact. So. I'm going to ask to see if they will be streaming at that same YouTube channel. I know the YouTube channel, so I may just give that out anyway, just in case they are streaming. So, because they sent me the recording uh, when they live stream when I preached last year. So, they sent me the actual link to the YouTube video, so they streamed it from that particular site. So, we'll be able to see that. Uh, you'll at least be able to see the, the have the YouTube page just in case they do stream it. But I will try to reach out to uh, some of the brothers there to see if they will be actually live streaming it this year. Yes. The first session is when? Friday. Friday, Friday night, January 17th is the first session. That night. Yeah, that night. Starts that night at 7, I believe. The first speaker is... Yes, uh, Pastor Russ Hart will be speaking at 7. Have you made the gospel transition? Will be his topic. Uh, so, seven, yeah. So, I, I, I'm going to try to be there Friday night, to and then Saturday, and then obviously Sunday we'll be back here uh, for service here. But they will be going from Friday to Sunday uh, at the conference. And so, uh, for those who can make it, uh, I ask that you come out, uh, share uh, in this conference with us as we can <clears throat> be, get with some other like-minded believers who also rightly divide the word of truth. And so, I think it'll be a good time us to gain knowledge, uh, be able to uh, fellowship uh, again with other like-minded individuals and also get a chance to meet others who believe the same thing that we believe, okay? And so uh, for those who are able to come, I ask that you come out and be with us and also to support us. Again, I had a, uh, somebody reach out to me today about uh, wanting to support the ministry. Uh, he was found a ministry online and it's really blessed him. So. I get that kind of question all the time, and you, people can go to buttonoutfellowship.com. There's a section there on the website that you're able to donate and give if that's what you want to do. Uh, again, we appreciate it. And also, if you go to the Facebook page, you can actually support us by sharing the gospel, okay? And so, again, we, we appreciate we appreciate your, your, your support. Uh, and, again, <clears throat> we're trying to... We uh, teach the right word of God in the right dispensation, so that's what uh, we're doing here. And nothing else, let's go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're finishing up this uh, book, this verse-by-verse -verse study to, through the book of 1 Corinthians as Paul deals with the Corinthians and their carnal mind, okay? He's dealing with them as it pertains to their behavior. He's reproving them of that behavior, and he's doing so not by with an iron fist, so much, but he's doing it by correcting their wrong doctrine, okay? And again, a lot of times in the church where we, where we falter is that we try to change somebody uh, by way of how we think they ought to be doing things, as opposed to just teaching them the doctrine and allowing the word of their mind to be transformed by the renewing of the word, okay? So, uh, so with Paul is doing things according to God's method, okay? Uh, rebuke, again, is not just telling somebody that because you think you're somebody closer to God than they are, you rebuke them by saying, saying things that uh, have nothing to do with the building up of their inner man, okay? And unfortunately, uh, as I, when I grew up, I heard a lot of preachers talking about how uh, they had the spirit of rebuke, and that spirit of rebuke uh, was basically if somebody didn't show up to one of these 
big meetings that they had, uh, they were to get rebuked for that, okay? And so, again, that has nothing to do with spiritual rebuke and how God intended it to be, uh, but it's just how what Paul is doing with the Corinthians, and he's rebuke, or re reproving them, all right, and rebuking their behavior by giving them right doctrine because it's the doctrine that's going to change us, okay? It's not uh, we ourselves, but it's the doctrine that's going to change us, all right? And so Paul is dealing with this issue of resurrection in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, and as he's dealing with this issue of resurrection, you have some people saying that there is no resurrection. Uh, you have people not really understanding what it is they believe for salvation uh, because to not believe in the, uh, that Christ died, died and rose again, uh, for your justification to not believe, that means that you have believed in vain, okay? All right, because you have not believed the right gospel, all right? And so that's what Paul is dealing with and contending in this chapter. We've covered all the way down through, uh, I think, right around verse 38, 37, right up in there, all right, where Paul is dealing now with this issue of resurrection because of, <coughs> excuse me, because of the question in verse 35, okay? All right, let's start there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, let's look at verse 35. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they what? Do they come? Okay, so that's the question that was asked, and we kind of covered those verses, and Paul then goes on to give some examples, all right, using farming language, which they should have known, all right? And he's using these examples to show that for something to be resurrected, it must first what? Yeah. Die. All right. And so understand that because Christ died, he was then resurrected and seen above 500 men at once. OK, proving his resurrection. All right. And the fact that Christ r was raised from the dead, we have hope. All right. In, an, in a resurrection for our eternal soul. All right. And so, again, that's what we're dealing with here. Look at verse 37. Or look at verse 36. Thou fool, thou, thou which... That which thou sowest is not quickened except it what? Yeah. Except it die, okay? Thou, uh, uh, and that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain, it may chance of wheat or of some other what? Grain, mm -hmm. which means that once you plant the seed, it'll come up different than what you planted, okay? That's what he's saying. Verse 38, but God giveth it a body as he hath pleased, as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own what? Right. His own body, okay? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for this day, this time, and this hour. We ask now that you help us to preach the word of God in a plain and clear way that all can understand. Uh, we pray now for guidance and understanding. Uh, we pray now that your word <clears throat> may may be uh, edifying, Father God, and that we uh, may be built up in our inner man as we continue to seek your will, and that we may walk according to your will in this lost and dying world, that we may save some. Uh, so in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let us not forget to uh, pray for uh, Brother uh, Dennis and his, his brother-in-law, uh, well, his brother and his sister-in-law. Let us continue to pray for, for them, all right? Uh, Look at verse uh, 38 here. So, so, but God giveth it a body as he hath what? Please. As it had pleased him, okay? So, again, Paul is dealing with some things now, all right? Watch this. Look at verse 39. This is kind of where we left off here. All what? Flesh. Is not the what? Same. Flesh. Right? So, now, watch this now. It's not saying that all skin color is not the same skin color, all right? He's saying that all what? Flesh. It's not the same what? Flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of what? Man. Another flesh of what? Beast. Another of what? Beast. And another of what? Birds. Birds. So understand flesh, as it pertains to how God sees it, is not determined by the pigmentation of your skin. Okay? Some people have more melanin than others. Okay? All right? So it's not talking about the, it's not the same type of flesh as it pertains to who you are as far as what color of your skin, all right? Racism doesn't exist as it pertains to God because there's only one flesh of men, all right? Okay. Right? That, that's all he's dealing with. And then there's another flesh. So when he did, makes a distinction between flesh, it's not between people. It's between what? Flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of what? Birds. See, that he's making a distinction as it pertains to these different types of flesh, all right? Has nothing to do with skin color, all right? You got a lot of people that are uh, uh, banking or, or 
building doctrines based on the color of your skin. And when in actuality, even in the Bible time, God never made a distinction by pigmentation. He made distinctions by nations. Okay? All right? And so understand, he made a distinction by nation. There's only one race of people. That's humans. Okay? So we're all human beings, regardless of the, the color of your skin. All right? Look at this. All right? Now, go to, uh, let me see something real quick. Go to Acts real quick. Look, look at this real quick. Speaking of that, look at Acts uh, 17. Let's look at verse 26. Salvation has nothing to do with the color of your skin, nothing to do with what denomination you're a part of, has nothing to do with what nation you're in, okay? Salvation is only based on what Christ has already done. Not what you can or can't do, but what Christ has already done. I was speaking to a gentleman today online, and uh, obviously he became indignant and blocked me. All right, but but the 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 goal or, or the issue was we were speaking about salvation. All right, and I asked him, "What are you are you saved? And if so, what are you saved from?" And he said he was saved, and he was saved from sin. And so I asked the question, "Well, have you sinned since you've been saved?" And he wouldn't answer the question directly, but he said, I don't live a, a life of sin. I said, well, that doesn't answer my question. Have you sinned, though? Okay? Uh, because if that's the case, then who can make it into heaven? If sin keeps us out of heaven, then who can make it? Okay? And if you, and I said, if God saved you from sin, he didn't really do a very good job of it if you're still doing it. Okay? All right? Because then I showed him the scriptures that were saved from the wrath to come. All right, we're saved from the penalty of sin, but we still, because we're in this flesh, we still have the proclivity to sin, okay? All right, because that's why we battle between flesh and spirit, okay? And so understand, when it comes to this issue, all right, salvation is not predicated upon skin type, all right, or nationality, all right? It's solely based on what Christ has done. Look at Acts 17, verse 26. Where we have it? Mm -hmm. All right. And had made of one what? Blood. All nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and had determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their what? Habitation. Habitation. Okay, Paul is going back to the back, all the way back to the creation in Genesis. All right. No matter what nationality you are, no matter what color of your skin, you all have the, we all have the same color blood, which is red. All right? And the blood is what gives us life. All right? Go all the way back to Genesis. Go all the way back to Genesis chapter number 1. Uh, let's start at verse 20. Going back to the creation here. As a matter of fact, let's go back to... <laughs> on your own time, okay? Uh, I'm trying to figure out where, where I need to go back to for the sake of time. Yeah, I want to go way back. But read this because it's talking about the creation. So when Paul is in 1 Corinthians 15 dealing with the flesh of men, the flesh of beasts, the flesh of fishes, and these things, it's all in here in the, in the, day of, the days of first couple of days of creation, okay? Let's just start at verse 14 because Paul is going to start with verse... First, first Corinthians 15, when we get to verse 42, he's going to talk about the stars and the moons that differ and all of that. So let's start at verse 14 here. And God said, let there be what? Light. Lights and the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and what? Years. So there was a time where the, the, when the moon set, rise, the sun, that's how they told time back then, okay? 
All right, that's how they told time based on these seasons, and this is why they were looking for signs, seasons, and all these different things. But we're not looking for those things today. All right, look at verse 15 of Genesis 1. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it, and it was so. And God made two great lights. Now watch this, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the what? He made the stars what? Also. Notice stars are what? Plural. All right, he made two lights, which is the sun and the moon. The sun being the, excuse me, the greater light. All right, it's the brighter light. All right. Look at this, verse 17. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was what? Good. And the evening and the morning were the what? Fourth day. All right. Now, watch this. Notice it says the evening and the morning were the what? Fourth, fourth day. day. Notice that the Jewish calendar or day starts at dusk. dusk. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, dawn, excuse me. Uh, dawn is nighttime, right? Uh -uh. Dusk is dust to dust to dawn. Yeah, 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 all right, yeah, dust to dawn. So, right, so dust, all right, it starts at dusk, all right? All right, and so understand, that's why he says from evening and the morning, what the what? Fourth day, because that's that completes a day, all right? Look at verse 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that had life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven. All right, so now we got the differing of flesh as it pertains to fish there. Then you got fowl has to do with the what? Birds, okay? And uh, I'm sorry, the birds first, the fowl. Look at verse 21. And God created great what? Whale. Whales, the different types of fish, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their what? Kind. Okay. And every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the what? Fifth day. Were the fifth day, okay? All right, so now, yes? Question real quick. Uh -huh. Well, it says be fruitful and multiply. Did he say that to man, or he just said it to? Yeah, he's going to say it to man also. Okay. All right. All right, now, keep Genesis 1. And go back to 1 Corinthians 15 real quick. Keep Genesis 1, and let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15. All right, let's look at verse 40. All right, let's reread re -re verse 39. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also what? Celestial. celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is what? Is another. Okay? Remember now, he's going back to the question that was asked in verse 35. Let's reread re -re verse 35. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up and with what what? What body do they come? So this is Paul answering these questions. But he's giving them analogies as to show you some things. As the difference of bodies that we'll receive, okay? Go back to verse 41, 1 Corinthians. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star different from another star where? In glory. In glory. So, will we, so will we also be the same thing, okay? Go back to 1 Corinthians. I'm sorry, go back to Genesis 1. We're in 1 Corinthians. <laughs> go back to Genesis 1. Let's start at Look at Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning God created the what? Heaven, Heaven and the earth. And then everything after this 
All right. He begins to talk about what it is that he made. All right. All right. Now go back, drop down to verse nine. Genesis one, verse nine. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land what? Earth. And the gathering together of the waters called the seas. And God saw that it was what? Mm -hmm. So at this time, God began to talk about the earth. And all the way in your Bible, the Bible talks about the earth. But remember, in the beginning, he created what? Yeah. Heaven singular and the what? Earth. All right? And so understand, when you get to chapter 2 of Genesis, most people say, well, because he said he made, let us make man in our image, then it says he made they them. So it's like, a, but in chapter 2, he's just giving more detail of what he did in chapter 1. Okay? And so in chapter 1, he created all these things, but in chapter 2, it may seem like either he's repeating himself or it seems like two separate events. But what he's doing is giving more detail of each day and how he made certain things, okay? But understand that all of these things, the earth appeared and was, was, was created at this time. All the way until you get to Paul, you don't hear anything about heavenly things, all right, as it pertains to people going there, all right? Heaven was always to come to earth and, and, and be a new earth, new land. But all throughout your Bible, the, it, talks about, it makes a difference between heaven and earth from the very beginning verse and to in Revelation. It may, always makes a distinction between heaven and earth. We understand the earth not to be clean in God's sight because of sin, and also the heavens aren't even clean in God's sight, according to Job 15 and 15. All right? We was talking about earlier in Corinthians last week, talking about... Uh, wise in God, you had to become a fool to the wisdom of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more I, I've already studied this out a lot when it comes to creation and, 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 and uh, the heaven, heaven, uh -huh. the greater light, lesser light, uh -huh. I'm in the education system. Well, the more I hear this and what I can observe, what the creator describes in his word, right. makes all that science stuff look real stupid. Right. To right. But they teach it and they, even, even when you talk about the different of flesh. Right. You don't even have to get a waiver for your child not to have to sit in class and learn about this theory of evolution where we came from a from a uh, some type of atom or some type of uh, parasite in the right, ocean. Right, and right. then it grew legs and crawled out. And then you turned into a monkey and then you turned into a, the word does not describe it. Right, right. But your child has to get a waiver not to sit and subscribe to that doctrine they're trying to teach us in school. Right, but right. The makes it very clear. Right, right. And, 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 and again, the devil, all right, is always in opposition to God, okay? That's why even Jesus said, let the little children uh, come unto him, suffer, to come, suffer the little children to come unto me. All right, because a child's mind is an impressionable mind, okay? And so therefore, if you can reach the child at an early age, which is what the history books and everything do, all right? History just means his story, okay? Somebody else is telling their own story of what happened, but the Bible gives us a clear uh, a story of what happened as it accounts to God, and we understand that when we can believe that God be true and every man a liar. All right, so what happens is they get them at an early age to believe in things that are not that are opposed to God's truth. Yeah. All right, and because the mind is so impressionable, it's the same way in church. Yeah. You have really no say so about where you go to church as a kid. Yeah. You go to church and you grow up doing the same thing, and that's why you can see from a very small age kids mimicking what they see even in church. Mm -hmm. All right, and then they grow up thinking that that's the way things are supposed to go, but it's really in direct opposition to God. I see these videos all the time of these kids dancing and, and you know jumping around and they're just mimicking what they see. And I was one of those kids. Mm -hmm. All right, even all the way through middle school, I was one to dance and run and jumping around because I, I was mimic behavior. And then as I got older, I just assumed, okay, I got the Holy Ghost. That's what they always did. Now what I was mimicking, that's I really got it now. But really, and all it was is just trained and brainwashed teaching, and you know that's what you've been taught. And so, until you actually study for yourself, which is why the scripture specifically tells us to study to show thyself approved unto God, you begin to see that there's more to God than just bodily exercise. Amen. Okay. One thing too is we have to start thinking about things too. Like I said, brainwash. Even from a natural standpoint, when I heard, I saw that too when I was young. I'm like, well, if we form from the animals, then how could animals still be? 
Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, like, if, you, if you evolve from that animal, then, then both of us here now? Right, right. <laughs> That's a good point because if, if, if they've evolved they to become he, us humans, <laughs> then that means how they're still re procreating themselves yeah. if they're supposed to evolve. And why has the evolution stopped? Right. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so again, I mean, and, and it's. It's a lot of nonsense, and when you when you actually look at things, uh, and you actually read the scriptures of God's creation and how things were brought about, all right, it makes perfect sense. It, it, it all the way down to the firmaments being split, the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, mm -hmm. things different in glory. That's why you can see one star shines brighter than another. Okay, even and even there. Okay, mm -hmm. and again, Paul is dealing. Uh, God was dealing with the creation. At this time, Paul is using this example to show how we're going to be resurrected and receive a new body mm -hmm. and new creation, mm -hmm. one star differing from another, mm -hmm. but all of us being where? In glory. Mm -hmm. You see that? Go to uh, Psalms chapter number 8. That's the thing. They also, with the, the real science and the sci-fi stuff, mm -hmm. like the, the biggest misconception is that, you know, there's other... They got a whole institution devoted to finding another inhabitable place once we tear this up. Right, right, right. Or, it, it, it ain't no going nowhere else. Right. Past, past the clouds. That's the firmament. It's heaven, and that's it. Right, It ain't right. nowhere else to go. Right. <laughs> As a matter of fact, go back to Genesis 1. Keep Psalms 8. Now that you say that, go back to Genesis 1 real quick. Watch this. I always... Man, it's all that, that's made up, bro. I always uh, uh, get people... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I remember the Genesis one one. The world, the world's most renowned uh, 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 scientists announced that. And, and go to Genesis one one. This guy named Herbert Spencer. He was one of the world's one of these renowned scientists, right? And he he basically explains. And it took him all these years to explain. He says basically the universe falls into five different categories, okay? Time, force, action, space, and matter. All right? Time, force, action, space, and matter. All right? This is what scientists. It took him years and years to come up with this. But go to Genesis 1. I'm going to show you something. All right? So the first thing we have is what? Time, right? According to science. All right? For anything to, to, to exist... All right, or the scientific world, it has to be measured by these five things, okay? Mm -hmm. Look at this. So, so we got time. So in the be what? Beginning. That speaks to what? Time. 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 All right. Now the next thing is what? Force. All right. Form. Then it says what? God. Mm -hmm. He himself is a what? Force. force. So you got force, all right? The next thing you got is action, all right? Verse 1, it says, in the beginning, God did what? Yeah. Created. That's what? Action. Okay, that means he did something, all right? The next thing you got is space, all right? And then what does it say? Created what? Heaven. The heaven, that's space, all right? Then the last thing you got is what? Matter. And the what? Earth, which is considered what? Matter. So what, what took this guy and all of the scientists all this time to come up with, God did it in one verse. Okay. And he put it at the very beginning. Yeah. <laughs> you see that? Put it at the, at the very beginning, all right? So that proves science right there. You got time, all right? You got uh, uh, force, you got action, you got space, and you got matter. You got all of it right here in one verse, all right? Go, to, go back to Psalms uh, chapter 8. <laughs> Psalms chapter 8. That's how you know mere men couldn't have written the Bible. Right. No way right. couldn't have written the way it's written, the way it's all put it's together. For right. There's no way. We're not that smart. Right, right. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm not there, but. Now, this is a well renowned scientist here now. So he's deemed to be one of the smartest of the smartest. Don't even probably know okay. but, but again, as we talked about. God makes the wise things of this world to be what? Foolish. All right? So this guy who people deem as some great scientist, which he is, probably is in his own right. But when it comes to the things of God, he looks just like a fool. Unwise. You see that? Look at Psalms chapter 8. Look at verse 5. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with what? Glory. Glory and honor. Isn't that what Paul just said? All right, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15.
Look at verse 40. There are, there are celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the what? Glory. glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is what? Is another. So what kind of bodies, in accordance to the question in chapter, verse 35, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, what kind of bodies will we have? These are the types. Just as we had different types of flesh, we're going to have different types of bodies. Okay, that's what he's talking about. Look at verse 41. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for one star differed from another star where? In glory. All right, we're gonna, I'm going to get down to something now. All right, watch this. Look at verse 42. Starts off with what? So. So what? Also. So also means what? In addition to. So. Also, now Paul is, what is Paul doing from verses 36 down to we, where we get to where he says, so also? What is he showing? What is he saying? What is he proving here? Because the body that you're asking about, your body going to be different. Right. He's dealing with the question about what kind of body as it pertains to the resurrection. Now, they're trying to catch him up just like they tried to do Jesus. All right. And Paul tells them, thou fool, except that thou, except something what? Yeah. Die, uh, uh, so is, uh, which thou sowest not quicken except they what? Die. Yeah. Has to die first. All right? That's the first thing. It has to die in order to be resurrected. But now you're asking what type of body. Listen, there's celestial, there's terrestrial, there's stars, there's moons. All of them have different what? Glory. Mm -hmm. Different forms and different shapes of glory. So also is the what? Resurrection. Resurrection of the what? Of the dead. All right? So understand he's talking about the resurrection of the dead. All right? Yeah, so he's talking about the resurrection of the dead, okay? All right, so understand now. It is, look at verse 42. It is sown in what? Corruption. In corruption. All right? And it is raised in what? In corruption. In corruption. All right? So now, watch this now. Based on the things that we have seen or the pattern of these things, all right, understand that it's dealing with the resurrection. All right, it's dealing with the resurrection. So Paul is saying, now, just as I gave you the examples of sowing, grain, something dying, something being born again, the different types of flesh that God created, the different types of uh, bodies that God created, guess what? So also is the what? Resurrection of the dead. See that? So he's given all these analogies to answer this question in verse 35. All right? Look at this. Uh, verse 42, so also... It is the, uh, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in what? In corruption. In corruption. All right? It is sown to, to resurrect. All right? But guess what? It has to what? Die. Go to Romans chapter 6. It has to die. Look at Romans chapter 6. Look at verse 3. We've covered this a little bit, but look at this again. Romans 6, verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his what? Yeah. In order for us to resurrect, we must first what? Die. Die. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into what? Yeah. This is not water now. This is something spiritual. It's not symbolic. All right? That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in what? Newness of life. But we can't walk in newness of life unless we what? Die first and become what? Resurrected. Because we were first born in who? In Adam. But once we die to the flesh or in Adam, now we're born of who? Christ. All right? Now we're born of Christ. Go, go to Matthew real quick. Let me just briefly cover this real quick because people think that there is no afterlife, all right? Once we die, then that's it, all right? Some people even think, as we talked about before, go to Matthew um, 17. Some people think we turn into, we become ghosts, spirits, angels, uh, uh, grass, uh, you know, some people believe in this thing called, you know, the, the, the Mother Earth and all this type of stuff and you know, uh, they believe that we're going to come back as the plants and the flowers and all this other stuff. And that's why they believe in taking care of the earth and all this other stuff. I but this, it, huh? I 
Yeah, yeah. I don't want to come back with no flowers. Yeah. Tell you, what you going to do with that? <laughs> I was thinking about it. Uh, we have a rabbit. My kids have a rabbit. And I was thinking about just the other day how this rabbit never leaves this house. The only thing he knows is this house. Right? When we let him out of the cage, he gets to run around a little bit. That's the only thing he knows. And I was thinking about that in terms of what people believe as far as an afterlife. Okay? Because if we come back as a flower, we'll only know where, we, where we're planted. One spot. One spot. Okay? There's no glory in that. All right? All right? Watch this. Look at Matthew 17. So people think that when we die, that's just, that's just it. We don't, there's no more existence. Okay? That's it. That's why people don't have hope, okay? That's, there's no hope. Look at uh, chapter 17 of Matthew. Look at verse 1. Mm -hmm. We have it. Mm -hmm. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured, what? Before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was what? White, White as the light. And behold, there what? Appeared unto them. Moses and Elias, which is Elijah, talking with what? Yeah. Him. So they appeared here. So they're still in existence. When you die, you don't. That, it doesn't mean that you no longer exist. Okay? You don't turn into a ghost. You don't turn into flowers and all that. You exist. You just change locations. All right? Look at... Um, Question. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Elias. Uh, Elias was your uh -huh. Was he taken away or did he die? He was taken away in a whirlwind. Uh -huh. So he could be, according to Revelations, he could be the disciple of that, one of the two that come back because they would die on earth. Yeah, I believe he will be one of those two. I believe it will be just the same two that, that was there, Moses and Elijah, because they represent the law and yeah. they represent yeah. uh, the prophets. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying by Elijah not being the first one to be resurrected because he never died. Right, because remember now, the, that prophet, Jesus took on the, uh, the, huh? the position of Moses, of Moses, that prophet, okay? That word. Right, so Elijah took on, uh, Elijah, John the Baptist took on the position of Elijah. So had they accepted the forerunner, which was John the Baptist, and then Christ himself, all right, that would have been the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Because remember, Luke 16 and 16 says the law and the prophets were unto who? John. And since that time, the kingdom of heaven is preaching, every man press it there into it. So had they accepted the forerunner and then accepted the Messiah, okay, that would have been a representation of the law and the prophets. Because the law and the prophets were to bring them, were schoolmasters to bring them to who? Christ. Christ. So yeah. once Christ was there, they should have received him. Should have known. Right? But because they err, as Christ says, not knowing the scriptures that they should have known, the same way people err today. Yeah. Right? Then you get these misconceptions and misinterpretations. All right? So therefore, the king, God himself, was with them and they couldn't see him. Yeah. Right? The same way when we think about it, man, how people don't see this? It's right here. The same way they couldn't see him, and he was standing right here, or right there. They couldn't see it, right? Because these things have to be what? Spiritually discerned. By the word. You have to have the word. You have to know the word. Amen. You have to know the word. Because if you don't, you'll be in error. Just like people today thinking that you have to live a perfect life to go to heaven. If that's the case, what, none of us are going. They're like the people at that Bible study, the last one we was at. Come out, if they said Jesus was down the street. We'll go check him out. Right. Yeah, they're going to do that out there. Right, right. That, that's, that's exactly. Because guess what? He was right there with them. And, 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 and the funny thing about it, and I have to always tell people this, is, man, I ain't nowhere in the world I could have been back there and seen Jesus and not know that was him. But you don't know the word now. <laughs> That's the same mindset that you're in now that you reject the word now. You would have rejected them then, just like they did. Yeah. You're no special than them. You see that? But people think that, well, it's a difference between reading the word and him being there. Well, what is the difference? He is the word. He is the word. So what is the difference? That's why I say most people who don't study the Bible, 
All right, how can you say you know God? Because the only way through God is through the Son. All right, the Son being the Word. Okay, so the only way that you can know God is to know the Word. All right, so if you don't know the Word, how can you say you really know God? I think they know of Him. They know of him or about him, but they don't really know him. There's a difference between the two, all right? And so understand, if people don't know the Bible, they can't say they have God, okay? Because people, and people say this all the time, God, Jesus, and say all this, God protects, he's my protector, he's my all of this, but you don't even know him. That's just like saying this person is my spouse, but I don't even know who they are. They're they going to protect me, they're going to do all this for me, but I don't even know who they are. Hey, where's your husband or where's your wife? Oh, right over there. We'll go talk to him. I don't really know him. Yeah. How, how, how silly does that sound? But people say it all the time. God this and God that. He going to bless him with this house, this job. Jesus this, Jesus that. But yet, you have no idea of who he is. You have no idea. You just like the idea. Just like some people in relationships like the idea of the other person. Mm -hmm. They don't really like the person. They like the idea of being with the person. You see that? Same way, people like the idea of saying God this and God that, but they don't really want to know him because they don't study. Right? They don't study. Look at this. Uh -huh. No, I don't know. I'm just going to get a subject there, but I had a question come in my head real quick. Uh, go ahead. It was, uh, henceforth, we are not... Uh, no, no, no. We, yeah, we are new creatures now. Right. No, no man after the flesh. Right. But what I'm trying to figure out is when it says that we are dead with him mm -hmm. that makes us a new creature uh -huh. in a sense because he resurrected as a new transformed God and we are supposed to be his say that again what are you asking we are baptized into Christ correct? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. into his death uh -huh. and his resurrection mm -hmm. so henceforth if we know him not as man Mm -hmm. We know him as in his glorified state. Yes, All right, absolutely. Our, our point is that henceforth we are not a body of flesh no more. We are new creatures, correct? Right, right. We're, and we are his body, right? And, and again, that's a good point because hopefully we can get to it tonight. I'm going to show you these things, okay? Look at this. Uh, go to Matthew 22 while we're over here and look at verse 31. Understand these things now when it comes to us dying now in order to be resurrected It's not that we just don't exist as yeah. some people seem to think because we just saw the example in Matthew 20 uh, uh, 17 look at this Matthew 22 look at verse 31 But as touching the resurrection of the dead have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God saying I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob God is not the God of the dead, but of the what? Living. living. So even when we die, we're still what? Living. living. Mm -hmm. All right? That's the key. That's the hope in which we have, okay? Mm -hmm. Go to 2 Corinthians 5. Even uh, in Luke, for the sake of time, Luke 16 talks about the rich young ruler. Uh, the rich man, I'm sorry. Yeah. And, 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 and how he saw... Um, his brothers, he died, he wanted to go see his brother, but he saw Abraham and them on the other side of the gulf, okay? Yeah. All right, and he said he wanted to go back up and tell his brothers, and they won't believe, what makes you think they're going to believe you? Yeah. You see that? Mm -hmm. Even if somebody came, uh, I heard one of these rappers say, uh, people talking about going to heaven, but I need a recommendation, mm -hmm. okay? So even if somebody came back and told you about heaven and hell, you still wouldn't believe them. Right? That's what has to be believed by what? Faith. All right? Faith in what we see, faith in what, I mean, faith in what we can read and what we study. All right? Taking God at his word. What did I say? 2 Corinthians 5? Yes. All right, go there and look at verse 6. Therefore, we were always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are what? Absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be what? Present. So if we're absent from the body and present with the Lord, that means we're still in what? Existence. Mm -hmm. All right, go to Philippians chapter 1. Look at verse 23. 
These are all things that have to do with the understanding of the resurrection. All right. Even though we die, we're still yet living. All right. Uh, Philippians chapter one. Look at verse twenty-three. Look at verse twenty-one. For to me to live is what? Christ. It's Christ, and to die is what? Is what? But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my what? Amen. Yet what I shall choose, I what? I walk not. Okay? But uh, verse 23, for I am in a strait betwixt the two, having a desire to depart. Now, why would he have a desire to depart if when you die, you're no longer in existence? Well, you see that? He right. He <laughs> says... I have a desire to depart and to be with who? Christ, Christ which is what? Far, far better. better. That's what he's trying to say. It's far better. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Look at this. Go back to 1 Corinthians 15. Look at verse 42. First, first Corinthians 15. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised where? In incorruption. In okay? Understand in incorruption. Okay? So when Paul is talking about this resurrection, we have, well, let me keep, let's keep reading. We'll see it. It is sown in what? It is raised in what? Glory. It is sown in Weakness. It is raised in what? Power. It is sown a It is raised a There is a natural body And there is a what? Spiritual body. spiritual body So you got natural, spiritual, earthly, heaven, mortal, immortal uh, uh, Weak, strong all right? uh, uh, Corruption, incorruption All of these different types Alright It lets you know that there's one side And then you go to the other Right? All of these things, okay? So understand, Paul is still dealing with this issue of resurrection. Now, go to this and look at verse 44. Look at verse 44. What, what does he say there? Notice it does, notice Paul does not say it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spirit body. It says spiritual. It says what? Spiritual. It says spiritual, okay? The new body is going to be flashing light unto his glorious body, all right? Because the spirit in and of itself, all right, it does not have a body. You see that? It's housed in us, okay? Which is why the spirit lives on, all right? The soul of a man lives on. All right, but when it comes to the body, it has to die in order for it to be what? Resurrected. And when it's resurrected, now we're going to receive a celestial body because that's for the heavens, all right, and which will have different types, all right, although we'll all be like Christ, but we'll have different types because we'll, have, we'll be different stars and what? In glory. You see that? All right, now watch this. Go to uh, Philippians, back to Philippians. Everybody be like way up there, man. Huh? Probably be like, lightweight with this capability. Yeah. <laughs> it's still gonna be. It's still gonna be like. It's, it's gonna. Still, it's gonna be Earth down here with gravity. Like right. They gonna have Israel was promised the terrestrial. The terrestrial the bodies. Earth. That's the type that they will receive. Because remember the question in First Corinthians fifteen verse thirty five is what type of body will it be? Right. You see that, and the types are celestial, terrestrial. We'll have celestial definitely. Absolutely, because that that's the heavenly. Celestial just means heaven. All right, look at Philippians 3. Look at verse 20. Look at verse, let's start at verse 20. For our what? Conversation, Conversation is where? In heaven. In heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord who? Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so the cross of Christ is the only way all right, for us to have a conversation in heaven. All right, look at verse 21. Who shall change our what? Vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his what? Glorious body, which is according to the what? Working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto who? Himself. Unto himself. All right, 
unto himself. Now, it says, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his what? Glorious body. Glorious body. So we'll receive the same type of body that the Lord Jesus Christ had. Remember, his body was what? Exalted now. Yeah. Go back to Philippians 2. Look at verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And because of that, verse 9 says, wherefore God, what? Also had highly exalted him and given him a name, which is what? Above, Above every name. And Jesus had a spiritual body, which is the same one we'll receive. Go all the way back to the uh, Gospels here, all right? As a matter of fact, go to Romans 8 real quick. Have we received that body yet? No. No. Huh? No. Are we in Christ? Yes. Yes. But the flesh no, is still here. Huh? That's the battle. Yeah, we're in Christ because we die with them through, through a spiritual battle. Okay. Okay. But that's spiritual. Huh? That's all. You, we didn't, we didn't, until you got in Christ, you didn't have a spirit. You just had, I think, I think Adam and Eve were created complete. Okay. Yeah. But once, once you were born after them, we were born to Adam. We didn't have the spirit. Okay. Okay. So, All right. So, so now that we, now that we, our, our, our spirit man was dead. Mm -hmm. Now that we are in Christ, mm -hmm. our spirit man has been quickened. Right. There you go. Yeah. So yeah. now, uh, and hold that because we'll get to it. May not be tonight, but we'll get to it. Hold that. Go to Romans eight real quick. Go to verse twenty three. Because our spirit man has been quickened, Colossians 3 and 2, okay? It's the spirit man that God quickens first, all right? Paul says in uh, uh, Philippians 3 and 3, put no confidence in the flesh, all right? God deals with our spirit man. That's why we're constantly being, 2 Corinthians 4, he says we're being, uh, the flesh is dying daily, but the inner man is being renewed, what? Day by day. Right? Because this flesh is not concerned. That's why when God talks about healing, God did not promise the body of Christ healing of the natural flesh. Because we'll receive new bodies anyway. What would be the purpose to heal you just for you to die again? People might say, well, what was the purpose of him healing here? The purpose was to give them a sign that their coming kingdom, which was at hand, was there to come. So he was healing all manner of sickness and diseases here because he promised it to the nation of Israel and that was their sign to see that this is the Messiah that our scriptures prophesied about. See that? So they, because they were a what? Sign people. First Corinthians 1 22, Paul says the Jews require a what? Sign. So because they were a sign people, they were looking for healing, natural things to come because that's what God promised them. People that are looking for that today are not in line with the will of God because now we're not walking by sight, but we're walking by what? Faith. Right? Because God has shown sight all these times and his people still what? Rejected him. You see that? So even today, people are waiting on God to show them a sign of who they're going to marry, who they, what job they're going to take, what this, what house, what all of these natural things that they're waiting to see. But God is not concerned with things of the building of the flesh. Those are fleshly, earthly things. That's why he said to set your affection on things where? Above, not things on the earth. God is not concerned with that. Right? Because you can go out and do that yourself. Right? And as I always say, if the unbeliever can attain it, then that means it's not of God. And if the unbeliever can get that job, guess what? You can go get it too. You don't need God to go get a job. You don't need God to go pay for a house. You have to do those things because those things are what? Natural, earthly things. God gifts you and blesses you with the things that are spiritual that, that you cannot attain here on earth. Right? He has, it has to be built in you through his word. That's what God is concerned with. He ain't concerned with how big or small your house is. He's not concerned with anything. What type of job you have, he's not concerned with any of that. Because you can witness to somebody and be an ambassador, right, in a, in a, in a shack just as well as you can in a mansion. Right? At, on the street corner, just as well as you can at a job. Anywhere you are, you can be a witness to Christ. And it's so true because God wants the glory. He wants so the glory. If you, if, you, if you do what he do, then you're getting the glory and he's not. So it's, he got to make sure that when he does it, it's something that it's, it's impossible for you to do. There you go. There you, and that's a good point because, again, 
And I like nice things. I have nice things, okay? So, but when people see that, they don't say, ooh, look at God. They say, dang, boy, can't got that nice. That's because they glory in people, glory in men. When you tell somebody about a job that you got, ooh, they don't say look at games. Say, ooh, buddy, bring it in that door now, yeah. right? So, so people don't, because God never gets the glory in any of that, yeah. right? But when you say, man, salvation and, and knowing the word, people say, man, boy, God done made a change in your life. You ain't the same no more. God gets that glory because we know it couldn't have been us that did it, right? right? And so that's a good point, absolutely. Look at it, Romans 8, verse 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even what? We ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit or to know the what? Redemption, Redemption of our bodies. That's what we're waiting for. Right? See, we have position, but we're, we have not changed condition. So positionally, we're in Christ. We're no longer in Adam, but conditionally, we're still in this flesh. Right? So we're waiting for our condition to match our position, but in order for that to happen, we must first die to be what? Resurrected. All right? Go all the way back to the Gospels here. All right? And go to, let's go to Luke first, uh, chapter 24. The minute we believe that Christ died on the cross, he shed his blood for payment of all of our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day for our justification. The minute we believe that, we automatically change position. Right? And position has to do with this. I just started a new job. All right? <clears throat> My old job, I no longer have access to the building. Even though I used to what? Work there. Right? I no longer have access to that building. I no longer have access to a direct deposit. I no longer have access to those things because I no longer are an employee of theirs. Now, look now at my new job. I have a new position. I have a new badge. I have a new direct deposit. I have all of these things that are now what? New. Look at that same way spiritually. And Adam, we no longer are there positionally because now we're under a different what? Authority. And Adam, okay, sin, we were uh, born in sin, all of these. But now that we're in Christ, we no longer have access to that yeah. in regards to we have, we're under new management, yeah. okay? Because we change responsibilities now because we're at a different, in a different position, yeah. all right? So the natural example is to be in positions. And unfortunately, the natural example of a position as it pertains to job is now in the church, Everybody wants a higher position in the church. When guess what? When it comes to the body of Christ, there is no what? Positions. Yeah. There, we're all of one body. There are no positions. And now in the church, they got a position for everything. Because they make positions because that's all people see. They want to be promoted in some type of way, just like they are at their job. When you don't get promoted at your job, people tend to do what? Leave that job. When you're not promoted in church, people tend to do what? Leave that church. So they come up with all of these different ways to keep you in the church. And they give you a position that, had, that the, God has nothing to do with. Right? You, you, you the minister over the snacks. Okay? So, so, so now you are in charge of that. So now you feel like you have a position. So now you come every week to do your job. The ministry, uh, the minister of music, right? What, what does that position have to do with God and the word? It's not the devil title, is it? <laughs> yeah, what, right? What the devil the minister do? <laughs> right, right, right. So, so understand all of these titles in the church, apostles, pastors, really in the body of Christ as bishops. We can do the work of a pastor, evangelist, all those things. We can do the work of those things, but there's no such title because we're all members of the what? Body. Same body. Same. There's no positional hierarchy in the body of Christ, but the church has become just like the world. All right? And people speak, feel like if they don't get the right recognition in this church, they'll leave and go to another one. 
Pride, until somebody recognizes them. Right? But it's not about that. It's not about all of that. It's not. A, it's about who we are in Christ. The minute I trust in the finished work of Christ on the cross, I become positionally under new management. Right? There's one head, and we're all his body. There's no different hierarchies in all of that. Superintendent of this, superintendent of that. What is all of that? That's man-made things that make somebody seem like they're higher than somebody else. I have a customer in this, uh, that, that mentioned that she left her, the old church she was going to because they weren't using her talents. Mm -hmm. And in the old church, they used to say, if you don't use it, God don't take it from you. So, again, with that type of erroneous teaching, people will leave and go somewhere to where they think that God is not going to take their talent from them because they gonna, this place is going to use them. Yeah. Right? What she said she was was a teacher. You know, so, right. I mean, you can do that anyway. Right. <laughs> you know? See, but but she well, she wants the recognition. Yeah. You see that people want the recognition of standing in front of somebody. They want because again, it's not about God. It's about them. And that becomes the issue, okay? Look at this. Um, what did I say? Luke 24. Mm -hmm. This is what our bodies is going to be like. Look at Luke 24. Look at verse 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted, affrighted and supposed that they had seen a what? Spirit. Spirit. Right? Just like he would do today. Mm -hmm. They call them ghosts. The Bible says spirit. Okay? People do the same thing. Oh, man, I, I saw my mom. I saw my dad or whoever. And they spoke to me and told me to do this and do that. All right? And then that's how, see, that's how I knew God had something in store for me. Huh? Mm -hmm. You see that? But people think this because this is what they're being taught. Mm -hmm. You see that? This is what they're being taught. God can use anything to get to, you know, to, you know he uses his word. He can. When people always say, he, even the rocks will cry. But if you read the context of that, he's saying that no matter what happens, he'll get glory and his name will receive glory. Even if you don't do it. That's the, that's the context of that. It's not saying that he's just going to do that. It's, it's giving a context of what's going to happen. Because every knee and everybody will recognize who God is. All right? So understand that. Look at Luke 24. Look at verse 37. Uh, verse 38. And he said unto them, why are ye what? Troubled. troubled. Now they were troubled. Now he could see that they were troubled. And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my what? Feet. That it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me what? Hand. Hand. See, you know All right, what, what is this verse saying? This might be a good one to leave on. Why is it capital, <laughs> not capital? It says spirit in small instead of capital. Where, in verse 37? Yeah. Okay. Where it says, boy, spirit has no flesh or no. Verse 39, yeah, yeah, okay. What what, the, yeah, I'm asking that. What, what, are you talking what about? is he saying? He said that the spirit is a spiritual body, like he said earlier. The spirit is doesn't have a body, it's how it's inside of us. So it's right. not a spirit. It's just, I mean, right. It's so he's saying this is a body now. This is not no spirit. This is an actual what? Body. Look at this. He says, Behold my hands and my what? Feet. Feet. Why would he say that? So you can see what the nails Huh? So you can see where the nails Because the nails where they hung him at were still there. So they, because they were frightened because they thought they seen a spirit. Right. You see that? He said, no, no, feel my head, touch me. He said, I'm real. The spirit don't have a body. The spirit don't have a body. That's why it says we have a spiritual body. Yeah. We were shown it natural, but once we die and resurrect, it will be a spiritual body, not just a spirit. Okay. Because a spirit would be frightened people, yeah. mm -hmm. just like they did here. Right. They thought they seen a ghost. Right, yeah. right. And so understand just like he told Thomas, reach into my side so they could feel it. And I'm pretty sure the thorns, remember that was uh, 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 Adam's punishment, the thorns of the earth, okay? Even that, that's why he had the crown of thorns, because he was dying for the sin of Adam. You see that? 
So he's telling them, feel me. This is not no ghost, no, no spirit. This is a natural body, huh? A spiritual body, excuse me. I'm going to ask verse 50 again where it says that flesh and what? Right, so watch this. Look at verse 39. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not what? Flesh and bones. Right? As ye see me what? Because a spirit has no body. Notice he didn't say blood here. Why? Because he shed his blood for our sins. He shed the blood. So when we receive, because remember, the blood gives you what? Life. So because he shed that, right, once we get once we get the resurrection, <laughs> once we get the resurrection, all right, understand that there will be no need for the blood. All right? Because we'll be resurrected and we'll have flesh and bone just like how he has. Because remember, our vile body will be changed like unto his what? Glorious body. So the same body that Christ had is the same one that we'll have. All right? Go to, uh -huh. Because with, without blood here, you're dead. But it'll be no more death there. It won't be no more death. Won't be no more death. <laughs> the difference is that the blood won't have life. It'll be the spirit that has life. Right. There you go. That's there you the go. Difference. All right. That, which is why we receive salvation as a present possession because we have an indwelling Holy Ghost. Thank you see that? That's, That's why we know we can have salvation as a present possession. Go to uh, John real quick, chapter twenty. And there was another question that popped up while you was doing that reading. Should I go there or should I leave it alone? <laughs> you know I'm going to ask anyway. What? Uh, what was that called, the Last Supper? That's not what it was called, but what about it? Well, what was that when they said, eat, drink, this is my body? Uh-huh. What did he just do with them? He told them to fill his body. No, he told them to eat, feed me. Next first time, what was that first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honeycomb. Yeah, honeycomb, yeah. honeycomb, honeycomb fish. fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they say they ate with him all the time. Then, right, 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 right. So there's a difference. But, but uh, and again, since you brought that up, he says the next time he'll eat with them is where in the kingdom. So again, practicing the what they call the Lord's Supper and all of that. That doesn't not what, make sense, right? Then. Because he said the next time you'll eat with me is going to be in the kingdom. See, that's why I was asking yeah. that question because. Yeah. He said, we see people now when they do communion, they say, henceforth, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I'll eat no more until I see you again. And then it shows that right then he just came back. Right, and right. And eating. <laughs> so right, right, right. That saying? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, because yeah. we'll eat, again, we'll eat the same foods. We'll have the yeah. same body just as he has. Mm -hmm. It'll be a spiritual body. All right. Same See, body. That does what, what, what I mean to say about it. It says, this do in remembrance of me till. Right, right, right. And, 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 and again, even when Paul talks about it, he's only talking about what was told to him oh, by yeah. Christ. He's yeah. not saying to continue to do it. Again, because eating the body, that, that's a symbol of something. That's why he told them to do it. But that's, now he's telling them, this is, touch my body now. This is the body. Right. This, this ain't no spirit, all right? Going, touch man. my body. This is actually me. All right. Yeah, go back, like go back. That way he can eat still. Right. So absolutely. That's, absolutely. That's the kitchen. Mm, I can still eat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can do it. I'm already thinking about sweet. Already thinking about eating. Yeah. <laughs> that's not the glory in which we're waiting to receive. The fact that we can eat, still eat. All right. Sound good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he said he's eating honey and fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the least of your worries. Look at this. Look at 1 Corinthians 15. <laughs> yes, sir. We're not going to John no more, right? No, 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 no. Scratch that. I was just going to go to where I was with Thomas. He told Thomas to touch his body. Thomas, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm not going to go there no more. For the sake of time, you can read it. John, uh, I think it's 20, chapter 20. and Verse 25, 26, somewhere in there. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians 15, look at verse 44. So it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a what? Spiritual body. Now let's read verse...
Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. We now know that, right? Based on what Paul just explained to us. Now, look at verse 45. Starts off with what word? Mm. And in conjunction to what we just read, mm -hmm. and so it is what? Yeah. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a what? Quickening spirit. Quickening spirit. Okay, now, there's a lot here, so I'm going to leave with this, and I'm not going to go into it, but this is a lot in this one verse. All right, but when he says, and so it is written, what do we, what do we know? Based on him saying that. Old Testament. He's quoting something in the Old Testament, okay? So we'll go back to Genesis and see what he's talking about. But he says, Adam was made a living soul. The last who? Yeah. Adam. Adam was made a quickening spirit. What does that mean? Christ. Christ. It's talking about Christ, but why does it say the last Adam? Because the first Adam brought sin into the world. How could he talk about Christ if we just established that he wasn't a spirit? We were just talking on, on, on. A quickening. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. You see what I'm saying? Because then we just, just talk about his spiritual body now. And he's not a, a spirit. He's a, a body form. So okay. why we, he even told him I'm not a spirit. So why would we... I see why you would say that. But uh -huh. then when we went through that whole spiel right there, I'm uh -huh. like, well, I don't know if that's correct then. Okay. And correct in what, in what sense? Correct in referring to him as a spirit then. Because then that would contradict what he just said. I'm mm -hmm. not a spirit. Okay. All right. That so was at that point, though, at that time, not right. spirit. That was when he was still down there with him. Right. So know. watch the context of what this he is now. He he's he he's Paul is talking about, and he says, and so it is written, mm -hmm. based on what we now know about resurrection, the body, and all of that. We, he's talking about what happened. Adam made us sinful. Yeah. Yeah. Christ is going to make us what righteous. That's the difference. so Adam was made a living. Uh, 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 so, uh, was made a living soul, but the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Based on what we just read, the quickening spirit means what? Alive. Mm -hmm. The spirit that, that, that makes the whole alive. Spirit. Quicken yeah. means to make alive. Yeah. Remember he says, I'm not the God of the dead, but of the what? Mm -hmm. Living. So what Christ did for us, he's talking about his work. Right. All right. So the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So God came in a form of flesh, not sinful flesh, but flesh, in order so that we could be alive in him. You after see that? So, huh? After he died. Right. The fact that he died, that's what we're going to go through on Sunday. The fact that he died, he can become that quickening spirit. Because now we're made alive in God through who? Jesus. Through Jesus Christ. Well, so wasn't. what's the definition of the, the spirit? Because uh -huh. I know I'm probably... Yeah, going uh, backwards when we shouldn't be, but I mean, so what is, So uh, I know it, it, you're saying it's referring to Jesus, but I mean, uh, am I holding on to it too long in what, what yeah. you were saying earlier? I, like, yeah, because yeah, what I was saying earlier was him after his resurrection. Yeah. What this so is saying. Why would he have to be a spirit, though? Huh? Why would he have to be a return back everybody, to a spirit? Call it this everybody, everybody has a spirit. God's, Jesus' spirit is God's spirit. Everybody, all of us have a spirit. spirit. Ecclesiastes says all spirits go back to God. Yep. All right, so, so the, the man is compromised of spirit, soul, and body. Yep. All right, so now this verse is talking about in reference to something being sown natural and rising up spiritual. Okay. So in reference to that, it's talking about our natural, which is Adam, mm -hmm. and Jesus, which is our spiritual. All right, not so much in relation to the bodies now at this point, but in relation to the first Adam, what he did, and the second Adam, what he's able to do. You see that? So it's not saying quickening spirit as if Christ himself is a spirit, okay? He has the same spirit of God, okay? But he also has body and, and flesh. Both times he came. Or the first time he came, and even now. So Paul is just bringing this here to show us something. Because look at verse 40, uh, 46. How be it that was not first, which is what? Natural. No. Spiritual. Spiritual, Spiritual but that which is what? Natural. And afterward, that which is what? Spiritual. See, it's only now, Paul is only, based on what we just read about resurrection, about bodies, and those types of things, the types of bodies we'll have, celestial and, and terrestrial bodies, he's saying now, 
It is written that the first person that came was not our spiritual uh, prowess, if you will, but it was the natural. The spiritual came what? Second. So we're born what first? Natural. natural mm -hmm. But we're raised up what? Spiritual. spiritual. Second. All right. So it's only referring to Christ as the second Adam in, in terms to our natural, natural and to our spiritual. You see that? Not so much the body per se itself, although it is referring to that because we will, we are having a natural body, but we will receive a spiritual one. But more so in the context, he's really trying to bring out the fact that the natural was first, but the spiritual is second. The spiritual didn't come first, because if it did, there would be no need for anything else. Because Adam and Eve were made what? Naturally. Perfect, naturally, yeah. without any sin. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. well, I was just going to say that too, that basically I think what cleared up a little bit, like you said, Christ had to die first before he become become the spirit. There you go. So he had to die first. He had to die first, first because the natural is first. And then now because of his death, we're now quickened and made a living soul. Uh, not a living soul, but now, we're now made spiritual according to Christ's work. Because now, go back to verse 22 of 1 Corinthians 15. Again, he's tying this all in. For as in Adam all do what? Yeah. Even so in Christ shall all be what? Made alive. Made alive. Because quickening has to do with making alive. So the same, and this is where we're going to go back to Romans 5 and all of that, because this is a perfect thing to show people, all right, when it, when it comes to, so all you're saying we got to do is just believe to be saved, we ain't got to do this? Yeah, because you don't believe anything to believe that you were born a sinner. People, you ask you all the time, were you born a sinner? Oh, yeah, I was born a sin. They, they glorifying that. I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Why? You didn't do nothing to deserve that. Oh, because of Adam, they go through the whole spiel. But yet, when you tell them, all you got to do is believe in Christ and his finished work, and you'll be saved eternally. Oh, I got to do all this work. Well, well, hold on. You ain't complaining about doing no work over here to be born a sinner, but you want to complain about having to do no work to become righteous. You see that? So that's what Paul is trying to tie in, that the first was natural. Christ had to come naturally in order to die so that now, because of his resurrection, we're justified because he rose again. All right? So that's what he's dealing with. All right? And we'll get to that when we get back on Sunday, Lord willing. Uh -huh. Okay, when we saw that when he said he is not a spirit, that was a small capital, right? Small spirit. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Do you remember what context that was in? In the context... When he died the first time, the dead rose and there were spirits running around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the reason why he said, I'm not a spirit. Right, right, right. And put your hands in my side and you can see that I'm real flesh and bone. Right. Because when he died and the, 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 he the said, stones, yeah. uh, some of the caskets open or right, the right. graves open, right. there were spirits running around. So they would have thought he would have been a spirit. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the context at that time. Right, right, That's right. why he showed him, yeah, this flesh, this ain't no Right, this ghost. flesh and bone, right, yeah. right. This is, not, this is not a spirit, which is exactly why Paul says, which is exactly why Paul says, this, there is a natural body uh, uh, and, then a, and then a spiritual body. He doesn't say this is a spirit, yeah. but it's a spiritual, spiritual. body, okay? Which, yeah. Because everybody has a spirit. All right, but then there's actual. Everybody has an actual body, just like Christ Himself. Now His body was perfect because He had no what sin. Yeah. That's the only difference. Excuse me. So our body will be fashioned just like unto His glorious body because He had no sin ever. Right. Right. So our body to become like His will be right. made perfect right. because the only thing we're waiting on Romans eight and twenty three is the redemption of our what body, body. because we're already in the right position. Right. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're just waiting on the manifestation or the change of condition. Right. Even though when you was reading the way they saw him, at, he was standing there, and then all of a sudden he vanished. Right, right, right. So that's what you go like. Wait a minute, bodies don't vanish. Right, and then the, and then the same spiritual power that he has, we will have the same ability. So that means we right. can walk through walls. Right, and... all of that. Yeah, <laughs> we have the same ability because of the spiritual. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> because I ain't got a, my car right there, my car right there, my car right there, 
And I, I would I'd rather walk. You don't need to ride in the car. <laughs> no, because then. Or you really the think about body. the natural, I'm the spiritual. He got all mixed yeah, up. He yeah, think about food, thing. driving yeah. the cars. Yeah, yeah see. He wants to take everything. Yeah, he taking everything. I'm taking just everything. what he said. What did he say? I could, eat, I could eat honey and fish. <laughs> I could eat honey and fish. I don't need no car. <laughs> But you gonna get one in <laughs> But look at here, he told them to go take the castle thing out and bring all the fish in it. Somebody was doing something. Go on the other side, catch them, bring me some fish to eat. That was all here on Earth. Yeah, that was for the sand. Where am I at now? Alright, nothing else again. Thank y'all so much for coming out tonight. Uh but for those who are online, we appreciate you all as well. Again, thank you all so much for supporting the ministry. <laughs> Uh, but those of you uh, uh, support this ministry, and again, uh, support is not just sending in donation, financial donations, but just sharing the gospel, okay? So I really appreciate all of you who share the gospel and who, who give financial donations, those who, of you who support this ministry. Uh, we, we truly, truly thank you for that, okay? And so again, Lord willing, we'll cover this on Sunday and get into uh, the first Adam and the second Adam and the reason why he's called the second Adam there in this particular verse, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, nothing else? Mm -hmm. All right, let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace, your mercy, your love, truth, and kindness. We thank you for the word on tonight. Uh, Father God, we thank you now. We ask that this word be built up in our inner man. Uh, Father God, help us to uh, uh, adhere to your word, and uh, Father God, help the word to govern our lives. Uh, Father God, give us a mind and a heart and desire uh, uh, to not to change the Bible to fit our life, uh, but help us to change our life to fit your word. Uh, we ask now that you pray for those who are sick, my uncle, uh, Dennis's brother. Uh, we uh, ask that you continue to bless them and strengthen them right now. Uh, and all of those who are sick that I may have, that I may have missed, uh, we pray now for strength, comfort, and peace, uh, even, in the, even in their sickness. So oh God, pray for those who've lost loved ones. Uh, pray for all of the uh, uh, folks who have uh, gone through the, the shootings and all the things that we hear about. We pray for strength and peace in those situations. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.